Hello taters, so y'all are back again. Thank you. Uh, I'm thinking of it. Y'all can give me some comments. I know this ain't me getting any comments. <clears throat> I'm open to suggestions of stuff to talk about and what I can do to improve. You know, what I can, I mean, obviously I can't do nothing, I don't have money to get cameras and mics and all that kind of crap, so. I've said it before, I'm trying to work on my sound and stuff, I don't know why I don't have better sound. And my lighting, all I can do is look at this bright ass light. I'm trying to use that, even though it causes us some shadow and whatnot, but I'm doing the best I can. So anyway, I'm not against you liking me and commenting. That's okay. <laughs> oh, and I have been getting some views to be a brand new channel just starting out. I've been getting a couple of views and stuff, so that's awesome. appreciate it. I'm doing something right. And today I got kind of a joke, I guess you can call it. <clears throat> I was looking at my blood pressure paper. I write everything down, and sometimes out to the side, I like make a note of what I've done that day, you know. Whenever changes in my blood pressure and this and that, you know. So what most people that have high blood pressure do is that doctors always say, well, write down what you've done and what you're doing that day and what it is and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I got like a paper. I don't do it normal. I don't do it every single day like I should. They say do it every day. It's the same time of day so that you can have like an accurate chart of what's going on. Well, whatever. I do it sometimes several times a month, and sometimes I skip a month. It just depends. So, y'all gotta understand. I'm I got high blood pressure and everything, and my wife has a bad hip and stuff. But she has a hip that's bothering her bad. She's waiting until her insurance kicks in from her jobs <clears throat> and that's a whole other story in herself she's been at a job now for like three years but we've never got her insurance but she moved out she started out as a regular employee moved up to like team lead and up to a manager and all that so now she's a full-blown manager only thing she can do now is general manager of the store. So now she's doing good and finances are in order and stuff. She's wanting to get insurance so she can get her hip checked out. Why it bothers her all the time. Okay, so that's kind of our story there. So we don't have sex a lot. We don't. <laughs> we can't. It physically hurts us. <clears throat> So it's like a treat. Every once in a while, we still try to do something. <laughs> but anyway, I was looking at my blood pressure thing. And one day, it was all the way down to single digits. This is like very low for me. I noticed my bottom number was only 106 or something, which I know is still high. It's like supposed to be 70, but... For me, getting it close to 100, that's awesome. It's like, holy cow, man. I'm down 20, 30 points from what it normally is at. <coughs> so, <laughs> so on our way out the door to go to work this morning, I was like, oh, you know what, baby? I was looking at my blood pressure thing the other day when I checked it, and I wrote down what it was. I was like... You know, it was all the way down to 106 after we had sex. 
I said, so basically you helped save my life that day. We got to start having sex more often. So you will keep me alive. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I got her on the way to work. Give her something to think about today. <laughs> that was awesome. We just try to have fun. We're both checked up and have problems and whatnot, but we try to have fun. Shoot. You have to. You can't let life get you down. Man, I've had so much going on in my life. That's ridiculous. But I make the best of it and I carry on. Whatever. That's all you can do. My wife comes home. She talks about all the people she works with and all their problems and all their just crying and babying around and it's just sad that's what I tell her it's like it's sad it's like people just need to be happy don't be so worried about everything all the time don't be griping about everything all the time and don't be calling in all the time I don't understand that she talks about people calling in and not just like once a month or some these kids today call in three times a week and stuff and it's like how they even got a job there man when I was growing up I didn't put up with that shit you got you did a no show a couple of times or you didn't call in a few times or you did call in a few times or whatever you wouldn't have a job People didn't give a shit. They didn't pay nothing. And you didn't have a job. They would fire you at the drop of a hat. It's just crazy. I don't understand. People come in, they gripe, they back talk, they cuss out their managers, they no show, they, they just. What in the hell is wrong with people today? So anyway, sorry about that. I wasn't trying to go off on no rant. I was trying to make this a fun video. I'm trying to tell like a little bit of a joke there. I'm dragging that all up. <clears throat> so yeah. Not sure what's going on nowadays. Here's the thing, though, I, I don't, I want to try to say this and shut up, okay, I, I broke down myself when I was young, I worked my ass off, I, I had hemorrhoids since I was like 17, 18 years old, when I got hemorrhoids, I was, because I was a bean pole, I was so little and trying to work like a man, it took a toll on my ass, literally, so now I got like, retarded hemorrhoids I gave myself a herniated disc in my back from just working I sat down and did the math one day and I came up with a estimate I came up with like I was carrying 72,000 pounds a week by hand, working two full-time jobs. <clears throat> and then my back starts hurting and everything. I was, it finally was jacked up. My back's hurting. I had like this big not like if you looked at my back you would just see something like this I just had this big hump in my back look like half an egg sticking out just whoo and it's like what the hell so I go to the chiropractor which was a big mistake fuck that never done that since screw chiropractor this guy starts cranking on me and cranking on me and nothing happens. So he makes me come back 
And he starts cranking on me and cranking on me. He's trying to get my back to pop and loosen up. And it won't do it. I'm so freaking stiff. And then he's like, well, let me give it one more try before you go. And you have to come back a third time. So he cranks down on me pretty hard. <clears throat> and my wife at the time, my first wife, was out in the lobby. And she said she heard it all the way out in the lobby. My back went off like a shotgun or whatever. It, it was like every freaking vertebrae in my back popped all the way up my spine. I just felt, I can't even do it, but it was like, a machine gun going off, but the volume of a shotgun or something. It was like, bam, 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 just real fast, like, bam. And I was like, oh, God, what the hell, man? Mmm, ooh, stupid freaking quack-ass chiropractors. Freaking jackass. He jacked me up when he did that. Holy cow. He left me in the room for about an hour with these things in my back. Just shocking and letting it relax, shocking and letting it relax, shocking and letting it relax. Like, he'd give me about an hour on this machine trying to get my muscles to loosen up enough to where he can pop my back. And he first started, he was like, he turned it up like, well, let me know when it's too, let me turn it up as high as, high as you can take it, but don't, I don't want to go so high that, you know, it's bothering you. I don't want to hurt you, but tell me when it gets to a point where you can tolerate it and stuff. So he starts turning it up, turning it up. You okay? Yeah. He turns it up. You okay? Yeah. I don't even feel nothing yet. And he turns it up, turn it up. And he finally gets to a point and I'm like, Okay, now I'm starting to feel it. And he turns it up, and he turns it up, and he's like, Is that too much? I was like, No, I'm still, I'm just, you just got it to where I can feel it now. I'm just, I'm letting you go on up until I can't tolerate it anymore, is all I'm doing now. And he's like, Well, I can't turn it any higher. He's like, I'm going to damage, it'll, it's going to start melting, my, causing damage to my, your muscles if I, keep, if I shoot any more electricity into your muscles. I, I peaked it out as high as I want to go with it. So he peaked it out as high as he wanted to go. It was like on a 10 or whatever. And he'd leave me in there for about an hour. 30 minutes, whatever it was, I don't remember. And then he'd come in and unhook me. And I'd go back a minute to relax and make sure I was loosened up as much as I could. And then he'd try to pop my back. And like I said, the first time it didn't work. And the second time, did all that again. He cranked it up. He shocked me. And then he comes back and tried it again. And it still will not pop. So. He pushed his luck by finally just cranking on me. He gave me a good hard shove, and that's when, blow! It took about 10 years after that before my back quit going out on me. Holy cow. At first, it seemed like it was once a month or something. For the first year, and then it was every few months, and then every six months, and then finally about once a year or something or whatever, and then I went about five years. But every time it went out again, God, it went out worse than the time before. It seemed like I would just be like locked up hit the floor and just be in agony and I wouldn't even do nothing 
it was like I would just move your stride. It wasn't a matter of lifting. I could still lift and carry and do whatever I need to do, but I would move wrong and bam, I'd be on the floor. The last time it went out, oh my God, man. That's when I had my old green car I talked about. When I had my wreck. I went to my dad's house. And I think I was going to leave the car running. And the last thing I decided not to. And I had the window down. I reached through. I just reached through the window and kind of twisted. I reached and twisted to turn the keys off and get the keys out of the car. I said, by the time I grabbed the keys and turned it off, something happened. I just said, oh my God, my back just said, and I was just, holy crap. I dropped to my knees and I was just on a death grip on my door of my car. I hurt so bad, I couldn't holler for help. I couldn't do anything. I was like, I was like, I was paralyzed, paralyzed in pain. It hurt so bad. So I sit there for about twenty minutes, latched onto the side of my car. Mm, I don't miss that shit. And. Finally, my dad comes out looking for me to see what happened, where I was at, and stuff. Because I'd already been in, like I said, I came back out to like turn off my car or whatever. I had my son. My son was just a baby back then. And I always unhooked his car seat and carried him around and stuff. <laughs> I hardly ever got him out of that car seat because all he did was sleep. My son slept like a rock. He slept half the days and slept all night except for to wake up to eat. And that was it. He slept. <clears throat> so I, I turned up my dad's and I took my son in the house. Came out to the car to grab my keys. Turned the, key, turned the car off and grab my keys. And... Never went back in the house after like 20 minutes or something. You know, my kid, parents are in with my son. They're like, well, what happened? <laughs> Did he leave? What's going on? So he finally, my dad finally came out to see what was happening and where I was at. And he finally just latched onto the side of my car on my knees. And he's like, he knew I had problems. My dad was a medic in the Navy, so he knew there wasn't much he could do. You know, he's just like, what did you hear me call an ambulance or whatever? I was like, no, it's slowly, it's finally starting to ease up now. I just need a little more time. He's like, he went and got me a little folding chair from somewhere. He found a chair and brought it out there and he... Help me ease up into the chair without my back spazzing on me again. And I sat for about another 10, 15 minutes till I could stand up and move. But oh man, that last time was the worst. That was, that was bad. <laughs> and then I hadn't really gone out on me since. It was weird. I don't know what the heck. I slept on the floor for about a year. I may remember that. I didn't even try sleeping in a bed. Something about sleeping in a bed, something soft and letting my back move and whatever. My back being able to move and flex would make it go out on me. It would hurt me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't sleep in a bed for nothing. <clears throat> so after about a year of sleeping on the floor, my back finally like got to where I could lay in a bed but it still bothers me to this day if I get a new mattress I'm not used to I just have to tough it out it takes me about a month and my back will like adjust and get used to that new mattress and just so I can sleep on it 
anyway, whatever. Like I say, this is just stories about me, just ramble. I try to keep it interesting though, so I thought I'd start out with a joke and then ended up rambling. But till next time, y'all, give me a comment so I know what I can do or talk about. Until next time, later, taters.